Normally it looks like this, a squarish shape. However, there looks to be a little pressure on the vertebrae. You can tell from this part that it is sticking out and looks like a bird's beak. What can you tell by looking at an MRI? Well, here you can only see the bones. The white parts you see are the tissue beneath the skin, but you can't see the spinal cord in this x-ray. The MRI will show the condition of the spinal cord, that is, the inside of the spinal tract. We can see if there is a displaced disc and if it is putting any pressure on the spinal cord. Uh -huh. We can see what state the spinal cord, not only the spinal cord, but the head or any other part of the body is in by taking an MRI. Which part are we looking at? This part here. This is the second vertebrae. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. These are the three, the ones we were talking about earlier. The fifth, sixth, seventh cervical vertebrae. These are thoracic vertebrae from here down. Between the fifth, sixth and seventh are the slightly herniated discs. These white parts here. They're sticking out at the back. Here. Oh, I see them. This is the spinal cord. This is the spinal tract. The spinal cord runs through here. It's not very wide to start with. So if they stick out a fraction, it becomes even tighter. So the symptoms will appear even if they stick out only slightly. Both the results of the O-ring test and the traditional modern diagnostic test done showed Yusuke's problem to be in exactly the same place. The O-ring test results and the results of the other tests matched perfectly, didn't they? That's right. So, can it be said that it is also effective in medical examinations? Yes, it can. It is very effective in diagnosing the location of bacterial and viral infections that may or may not show up in blood tests, x-rays or MRI. An important application of the bi-digital O-ring test is screening for cancer in its early stages. Since it is a test using human fingers, it looks subjective and unreliable, but the opening of the ring is quantifiable and a reliable indicator, so long as Dr. Ormuda's procedure for selecting the test finger is followed. So, by screening for cancer, you mean that it can be used to see whether a patient is in the high-risk cancer group or not? That's right. Have you done any work in this area? Yes, I have. Up until now, I have actively followed up on any patients who have showed strong resonance with microscopic slides containing adenocarcinoma tissue of the stomach. Using x-rays? Yes, I do further tests. At the same time, I also do further checks on the patients who didn't react to the O-ring test. Let's have a look at the results of medical examinations Dr. Shimotsura has done for stomach cancer. These are the results of examinations done using the O-ring test on 380 patients who came to the hospital with a variety of symptoms for checkups. The number of patients that reacted with an open O-ring to stomach cancer tissue was 69. Of those, nine were found to have cancer when an endoscopic examination, x-rays and biopsies were done. 311 patients did not react to stomach cancer. Of those, not one was found to have stomach cancer when the same laboratory diagnostic tests were performed. According to statistics, the stomach cancer detection rate by annual screening averages about 0.1% in Japan and 0.05% in the rest of the world. But Dr. Shimotsura's rate was more than 20 times higher. No doubt there is something to this phenomenon, the O-ring test. How can such a method of diagnosis be possible? First, in the case that there is an abnormality in the person's body, why is it that muscle strength in the fingers declines when the skin above the pathological area is touched? We visited Showa University in Tokyo. Making the O-ring with the fingers is a voluntary movement. 
A command comes down from the cerebral cortex to the fingers to form a strong O-ring that can resist being pulled open. Then, the electrode held in the other hand is directed toward the body surface above a pathological area. This produces a message from the skin surface above the pathological organ to the central nervous system, which interferes with the original message to the fingers to keep the ring closed. The fingers open because the voluntary movement command has been intercepted along the way. In the case that there is no abnormality in the stomach, the fingers don't open. How does that work? Because there is no abnormality in the stomach, this information is not relayed to the central nervous system, and hence there is no change in the skin. Since there is no change, even if it is touched, there is no impulse to intercept the command to form and maintain the ring. So does this flow not, not exist in a normal situation? According to whether the fingers open or not, we can tell if this abnormality exists. In the case that there is an abnormality in the body, if the skin near it is touched, there is a loss of muscle strength in the extremities. This has, in fact, been confirmed in animal experiments by Professor Takeshige, Dean of the Medical School of Showa University. A rabbit with a duodenal ulcer is made to move his paw by electrical stimulation of the motor cortex of the brain. Next, an electromyogram EMG is used to see whether there is a drop in muscle strength in the paw when the skin near the duodenal ulcer is pinched. These are the results. The white areas are formed by the disappearance of the EMG action potential that occurred when the skin above the pathological area was pinched. This shows that there was a drop in the rabbit's muscle strength in the paw. First, I'll check the bronchial tube. There's nothing wrong there. Now, the right lung. There's an abnormality there. Now, the left lung. You have no problem with your left lung. In the use of the O-ring test, even very slight stimulation of the skin above the pathological area will cause a drop in muscle strength in the fingers. It has been reported that the test will not be reliable if there are objects that emit electromagnetic waves such as electrical appliances nearby. Electrical or magnetic fields also interfere. We will do a test to see if the results of the O-ring test are thrown off by a battery and a magnet. We will try it on the neck where we already know there is an abnormality. There is an abnormality of about minus four here. Now pick up the battery. Hold it by the negative pole. Is this okay? Yes. I'm holding the negative pole. The abnormal response has disappeared. The earring test cannot sense any abnormalities in my neck. That's right. I'm only holding a little thing like this. OK, now hold the telephone card with the magnetic strip. I'm now putting the telephone card in my hand. In the same way, the O-ring test does not work. Then it can be said that the results of the O-ring test can be influenced by magnetic objects such as these. That's right. There seems to be a strong relationship between the O-ring test and electromagnetic waves. What does Dr. Omura, the originator of the O-ring test, think? 